What's up, people? Welcome to this video. Thanks so much for joining me. Today, I'm going to be showing you how I made this render. In this video, I'll share a high-level overview of how I created this scene. First, I'll break down modeling the teapot, then touch on how to use curves to create a handle, and then show how to create a simple flower. Next, I'll introduce Substance 3D, which I used to create the tiles, brief you on my render settings, and share other various tips from my workflow. Finally, I'll introduce the Looking Glass, an epic holographic display, and demonstrate how to render an image for display on this device. Even if you don't have one, I borrowed a friend's. It's interesting to learn the basics of how it works, especially as we consider the evolution of hardware in this new realm of Web3. And of course, I'll show you how to set it up to best showcase your art, which in the end is the most important thing for us artists. This render is based off a photo prompt. The photo prompt was posted by an Instagram called Still Here Still Life. Two women artists run this Instagram and essentially they choose a photo prompt every week, post it, and artists from all over the world post their interpretation or share their interpretation of that prompt. And it's a pretty amazing like archive of artists work from all over the world. This page started in March of 2020. I've been following it as it's like grown so much over the course of the past two, three years. And um, it's been a joy to watch. This is my first time participating. So I'm super chuffed to just have participated. But cherry on top is that I'm kind of really pleased with this render. I think it looks pretty good. So if you want to learn how to make something that looks like this, or if you just want to learn a little bit of Blender, and you're new to Blender, you want to learn, dip your toes in, or if you're someone who participates in the Still Here Still Life Challenge every week, like join me, watch this video, learn a little bit about 3D modeling, and next week, um, you too can submit a 3D version of the prompt. You can submit a render for your artist interpretation. I think that would be super, super cool to see more renders on the page because there's actually not that many. Um, and what's amazing about 3D art is that once you model everything, create the scene, there's so many ways to stylize it. Um, even though it might be more work up front, it is, it opens the doors to so many creative decisions down the line. So that's it for the intro and uh, let's roll the music um, and jump in. The teapot begins with just your everyday sphere. I created the lid by simply beveling an edge loop and scaling inward the corresponding faces. Later on, when different materials are added to this geometry, it will seem like the lid and body are two separate pieces. The flat bottom was created by simply dissolving the bottommost faces of the sphere, and then insetting and extruding a little bit for a slightly smaller base. For the spout, I selected four faces and subdivided them so I'd have enough geometry to create a smooth circle loop cut. Then I extruded the faces of this loop cut. The lid of the spout is again just a beveled loop cut extruded inward, and the latch thing is also a bunch of loop cuts and extrusions. The handle begins as a NURBS curve. Add a NURBS curve and move it into position. In edit mode, select and move the points of the curve to match where the handle is. Next, I added another Bezier circle. After selecting the circle as the active object under bevel, then any adjustments I make to the circle will alter the geometry of the NURBS curve. This is so handy! After this, I extruded from the individual vertex to create three new limbs. Once the three limbs are created, it's time to rearrange all the vertices to match the reference image. It is also helpful to consider what this handle's proportions might be in real life. Is there space for the hands? Next, I applied materials to the handle by duplicating the ceramic polish material, renaming, and changing the color in the shader editor. Let me just share how I added the material. Sometimes I like to add materials as I model as opposed to say 
adding materials after blocking out the whole scene because it's just nice to look at. For the teapot, I added a sample material in the material library FX called polished porcelain and then just changed the color accordingly depending on the object. For the tulip, I started with a cube and adjusted the proportions to better match the tulip petal. With a few edge loops, moving along the z-axis and scaling the contour, I arrived at a fairly nice looking petal. In order to instance this petal such that it will look like a full tulip head, I first added an array modifier to increase the number of petals. Then I add a curve deform modifier and select the Bezier circle so that the iterations take place along a specific curve. This makes a tulip head. With a few adjustments, moi. For the tiles, I just created a plane, then used Substance 3D's Blender add-on. Substance 3D is an Adobe Community Asset Library that created an add-on that directly links the user to their website within Blender. Once inside the asset library, I simply filtered for materials and downloaded the SBSAR file, however that's pronounced. Once downloaded, the materials can be applied directly to the object. The material might look a bit stretched, which means the UV is not mapped well. So I rescaled the plane and then added an array modifier to increase the surface area. This same process can be applied to that groovy checkered backsplash. Scale and arrange. The vase is a similar process to the handle. I started with the Bezier curve and edited the curve to match the contour of the vase. After that, add a screw modifier, change the selected axis, and adjust accordingly. After changing the color, I imported a few flower models that I had already downloaded from Sketchfab and then arranged the flowers in the vase. Next, I went to work on the coaster. I simply added a cylinder, added an edge split modifier to smooth normals and make the edge appear sharp. Then I selected the bottom face, inset and extruded. The scene really comes together when the coaster sits snug under the teapot. Since the color of the coaster marble is quite warm and nice, and the ones available on Substance 3D are much cooler, I opted to warm up the material a bit by simply heading over to the shader editor and adding a color ramp after the color image texture. As for the checkers, I imported a checker PNG with alpha, subdivided and used the shrink wrap modifier to make it stick, if you will, to the face of the coaster. Sculpting this bird was surprisingly not too hard and quite fun. Having recently attempted to sculpt mostly humanoid things, I've been rather disillusioned with the sculpting workspace. But I stand corrected. It all starts with the cube as any good story does. I subdivided and then stretched the cube to get a more birdy torso. Next. I toggled on the mirror modifier and used the grab brush to get a basic overall shape. Later, I went in with the inflate brush and crease brush. For the wings, I used the crease brush to make those indented lines and inverted an inflate brush to make the eye indents. For the lighting, I added an area lamp approximately where the window might be in the reference image. This, in conjunction with an HDRI, I used one of the default HDRIs, looks decent. You can also play with the hue of the light. I ended up adding another area light as a fill light to even out the scene a bit. It reveals more of the work and is more aesthetically pleasing. For the camera, I changed the output to 1080 by 1080 to match the reference, then, in render settings, I toggled on bloom and amb ambient occlusion, as well as color management. I changed the setting to medium-high contrast and was satisfied with that output. At this point, it is helpful to think about what your plan might be for post-processing. 
do you want to render out an image that is more similar to a raw file with a plan for post in Lightroom or DaVinci? Or would you rather the render come out ready to post or print, ready to be loved by the world? Last but not least, let's talk about the Looking Glass display. The Looking Glass display is, and I quote, the first system for personal 3D holograms. The one I've borrowed is called a portrait, which has a 7.9 inch display. Many creators that I admire have a display or have had their work shown on the display from people like Arendelle to De Deuce. I think the most exciting thing about the looking glass is that it's truly a new way to view 3D work in a form of 3D. So cool. To use a portrait, you need to download three packages from lookingglassfactory.com. The first is Holoplay service, which facilitates communication between your computer and the looking glass. Second is Holoplay Studio, which aids the user in managing holograms from various sources. The third is the Blender add-on, which allows users to see the viewport directly in the looking glass and also allows the creator to see the render in the looking glass directly from Blender. Here we are in Blender. This is the Looking Glass Blender add-on called Alice. You can see it is displaying our viewport in the Looking Glass. To set this up, select the camera and adjust the view cone. The file type for a hologram of a render is called a quilt. A quilt is essentially an image made up of several smaller images of the same render, but from slightly different angles. The more views, the more perceived depth. Arturo Real has a good tutorial that goes into the details of how to adjust your settings in Alice for the best results, which I recommend you check out over on his channel. But for now, we can enjoy the still life in the looking glass. Thanks for joining me in this walkthrough video. If you end up creating your version or this week's, whatever week you're watching this, Still Here Still Life's official prompt, or even your own imagined still life? Let me know in the comments. Also, I'd love to set up your render on the looking glass too, so we can appreciate it in all its 3D glory. Lastly, if you are new to 3D modeling or Blender, this video may be a bit too uh, high level. I get it, I've been there. For y'all, I have recorded my whole real-time workflow with narration which I'll soon share chapter by chapter on a separate playlist right here on my channel. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel. Bye bye.